This video is a direct sequel to our Planet Zoo Year in Review video. Please check out that video first for a breakdown of the base game and its first year DLCs. Planet Zoo has just celebrated its two year anniversary. After receiving more sustained development, patch cycles and content expansion driven by community feedback. In this video, we'll cover the DLCs of this past year in chronological order, assess their individual offerings and analyze the state of the game holistically after its second season. This is Planet Zoo, the season two review. Planet Zoo ended its first year anniversary on a relatively reasonable high. The core foundations were there for the game to strive towards becoming a classic in the Zoo Tycoon subgenre, and in our year in review, we praised the visuals, the creativity tools, and especially the animals themselves. However, there was some criticism at the scope of the animal roster after its first three DLCs, with many players, including myself, hopeful for marine and flying animals, and generally just more zoo relevant species absent from the game at launch. Furthermore, one of the areas we personally criticized that was weak were the management and general gameplay slash simulation aspects. They weren't terrible, but could definitely be improved to provide a better playing experience rather than just allowing the player to design a good looking zoo. So, since its first year anniversary in November of 2020, Planet Zoo has received four patch cycles and four new DLCs. The Aquatic Pack launched in December, right after our year in review, introducing five new water dwelling animals and plenty of aquatic scenery. The highlights of the accompanying 1.4 patch featured deep diving and deep water mechanics to support that pack and the Animal Talks feature. The Southeast Asia Animal Pack launched in March of 2021, introducing a new DLC template featuring a total of 8 animals, but with limited scenery. Many Southeast Asian favorites joined the roster, and with the 1.5 patch, introducing customizable billboards and a host of quality of life improvements. Planet 2 then embarked to the African continent in June of 2021, back to its template of 5 animals, but with another barrage of scenery pieces. Patch 1.6 saw the addition of habitat webcams and vista points. The latest DLC, the North America Animal Pack, launched in October 2021, introducing 8 iconic species from the continent. Patch 1.7 expanded further the Animal Talks feature with a new tiered seating building, guest barriers and some more quality of life additions. It was a long wait for an eventual aquatic pack, with many disappointed this sort of scope was not covered in the base game. Regardless, when it was announced right after the first anniversary, it caught many by surprise. The aquatic pack was launched in December of 2020 and is the first pack that doesn't follow the previous DLC formula of covering regional or continental scopes, although it does have a selection of many animals from the Americas. The pack features the typical four habitat and one exhibit animal template. Obviously, all animals are themed around the aquatic environment and as such spend some or most of their time in or near water. The selection was quite decent, but there were a few animals that could have been alternated with better choices. The novelty of the pack and the idea of this pack is certainly up there, however, as this is arguably the most unprecedented move the developers have done up to this point in terms of sheer innovation. The Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman was a bit of an outlying choice as, although there was some interest for it, and the model is exceptionally designed, it was generally felt there were probably better crocodilian candidates out there. A recurring theme we'll see though is that Frontier loves to consider animals across a wide spectrum of sizes, they also love to cover the extreme ends of those spectrums, and with the others in this roster being much larger in size, the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman as the smallest crocodilian in the world is probably here to balance out the roster. The giant otter is certainly not the first octa I would have picked, as ideally I would have liked to have seen an oriental or asian small clawed otter here. Instead, the giant otter was sorely missed from the previous season's more disappointing South America pack, and its addition is perhaps seen as a sort of redemption pick. Nevertheless, great to see an Amazonian icon into the game. 
No surprise to see a pinniped in an aquatic pack. The grey seal wouldn't have been the first name on everyone's lips for this animal group, but this species, alongside its close relative, the harbour seal, are among the most widely exhibited pinnipeds. A super welcome addition was the king penguin, and although there is some interchangeability here with the emperor penguin, king penguins are just way more common in zoos and aquariums to be ignored. We finally got a penguin after more than a year. One of the most requested animal groups finally makes an appearance into Planet Zoo. Better late than never, I guess. The king penguin also marks the debut of the first and so far only Antarctic animal to be introduced into Planet Zoo. Perhaps more importantly, it introduced a penguin rig for modders. A big game changer for the modding scene and something we'll talk about later. For the exhibit slot, the Diamondback Terrapin has been chosen. Although it marks the first turtle in the game, it is a pretty underwhelming inclusion all things considered, especially since there are also better turtle candidates. Its standard of quality I feel is a lot higher than many other exhibit animals though, sheer virtue of the animal being a lot more active than your standard snakes, insects and arachnids that make up the majority of the game's exhibit roster. The aquatic pack includes over 170 new scenery pieces, perfect for any aquarium setting, but also bolsters the tropical theme for players to recreate lush sandy shores or pristine river habitats. Some highlights of the items include the forks, trees and rock pieces, extremely versatile items as they can be recolored and molded into essentially any geological or organic shape as necessary. The aquatic fencing, which has quickly become my favorite go-to fence piece, has equally many applications. The pack doesn't include many aquatic flora pieces however, most of that being released in the 1.4 patch, free for all players. There was however a lot of support for the rainforest theme. The giant rhubarb, lipstick palm and titan arum make great additions to a tropical forested area. And thus I think despite it being labelled as an aquatic pack, the animal choices and scenery almost indicate a compelling alternative Amazonian pack. The scenario zoo included in the aquatic pack is the Red Barn River Zoo, a rural homestead style zoo set in the Pacific Northwest. Featuring a well-designed penguinarium and otter aquarium, the map provides an insight into the type of underwater viewing attractions that can be built with the mechanical additions from the corresponding patch. A waterfall savanna habitat as well makes this homely, small-sized map a perfect starter zoo to dive right into learning the ins and outs of aquatic habitats. To support this ambitious in scope pack, patch 1.4 essentially introduced many mechanical changes to support the potential of future aquatic additions. The introduction of deep swimming and deep water finally allows animals to not just swim at the surface like at launch, but dive underwater with new animations and behaviors. This is available to all animals of the pack and has steadily been introduced to more and more animals through the later patches. This also helps support the new underwater feeder. Placed in deep water, animals will now swim to the bottom in order to grab their food items, providing an intimate spectacle for underwater viewing areas. A water temperature regulator is also included in this patch to fine tune the temperature of water bodies and allow a bit more specific control over aquatic animal comfort levels. Besides support for the aquatic pack, there's also a major new guest entertainment feature in Animal Talks, centered around the animal talk point and the new educator staff type. With scheduling and plenty of customization, this is a pretty self-explanatory feature. It's pretty simple and easy to learn, but one with a lot of requests for. Now there's a new way to boost that education rating besides simply having educational boards and speakers. All in all, this is a substantially game-changing pack featuring a lot of value to hearken in the second season of Planet Zoo. The corresponding patch 1.4 also added boatloads of depth to the gameplay as well, pun fully intended. I thought the animal choices, though strong, could have been tweaked slightly, but really no major complaints. The scenery items have consistently found use in many situations, and thus this is one of my favorite Planet Zoo DLC packs thus far. The amount of novelty in rigging and animations has greatly enhanced the modding scene as well, introducing new animal groups never in the game before, such as penguins and seals. The Southeast Asia Animal Pack was launched in March of 2021, the second pack of the second season, but one with many consequences to Planet Zoo's DLC formula. This is the first animal pack offering a new arrangement, 
more species than usual, without any scenery pieces to compensate. This consequently allows the developers to provide greater coverage to one of Earth's most biodiverse regions. As a result, the Southeast Asia pack features 7 habitat animals and 1 exhibit animal for a total of 8 species. A very generous offering, as I personally consider animals more valuable than any amount of scenery pieces. And wow, are all these picks extremely coveted. It features a selection of unique animals that are not uncommon in captivity, and they will be recognizable to many zoo goers. The North Sulawesi Babarusa is one of the stronger choices from the pig family, especially since they are showcased in many major zoos, a quintessential if you will for any Southeast Asia theme. Their defining feature in the male curved tusks makes it a unique addition to enrich tropical themed zoos. Another animal in the same inkling is the Binturong, again showcased in a lot of zoos. The bear cat is just such a unique creature that would have been a disappointment not to feature in a pack of this scope. Funnily enough, its model was reworked by Frontier after sharp criticism from the community. Everyone's favourite spotted tree cat makes an inclusion. In my two years of Planet Zoo content creation, this has probably been the most requested feline species and its adaptation into the game is pretty much exemplary chef's kiss. Although it potentially could have been replaced with another animal, the doll is still a strong choice as a canine from the region, mostly for its fox-like cuteness. Another animal model that was also recently reworked to be more accurate to its real-life portrayal. A quintessential animal for any Southeast Asian consideration, the Malayan Taper introduces a unique large herbivore to the roster, an adaptation of an animal seen as iconic and widespread in captivity. I would have been severely disappointed to not see it, so I am greatly pleased it has made it. Besides the orangutan, the proboscis monkey is probably the next most famous primate of Southeast Asia, an astute addition to the roster with no complaints about its selection. Finally, the sun bear. This is an animal that I personally put as the flagship in my own predicted pack idea for Southeast Asia, and so it's great to see it here. After a few questionable bear choices in the base game, it's great to finally see one of the smaller, more exotic bear species finally enter the roster. The giant Malaysian leaf insect is an interesting animal in its own right and a fairly sound addition, but the region is known for its diverse reptilian species, which I think would have made better candidates, including many lizard and snake varieties. Contrary to the advertised no scenery, there are still signage available for each of the animal species. They're okay, I mean I would have preferred more consistency in their art styles, since each of them seem to fit differing thematic purposes. The art style for the clouded leopard, doll and taper signs could have been replicated for the other species as well, as I quite enjoyed the semi-realistic signage. Included is a new scenario zoo, the Kuala Buntu Taman, a Malaysian zoo situated in a marshy and swampy riverine delta. The environment of this map features a lot of verticality and cliff faces, rocky outcrops for the player to build amongst. A riverboat ride, stone bridges and tori gates also provide some more Asian themed inspiration. This is thus an intermediate map to study terrain sculpting and manipulation. To support this massive DLC, patch 1.5 added some much needed quality of life additions. Billboards in multiple sizes were now available, allowing custom user-made media to be played in the game. Essentially the same feature from Planet Coaster but now ported into Planet Zoo. Since billboards can also be set to advertise and direct guests to certain areas of your park, it's not only a great scenery item, but also a capable management item as well. Similarly, the ability to add multiple zoo entrances provides much better traffic flow management as guests no longer need to be funneled to and from one singular location. My favourite feature though has to be the addition of the staff traversable map. Ah, I've been crying out for something like this at the game's launch. More complex habitats with a lot of objects in particular can really benefit from this filter to make sure that staff can access those pesky places players like to hide their enrichment and feeder objects. In conclusion, this pack really delivers quite a dazzling array of requested animals, not just because it has the highest species count offered, but simply because there were too many animals here that had to be in the game, such as the sun bear or the clouded leopard. It offers no meaningful scenery pieces, but to be fair, the amount of animals in my opinion more than makes up for it. The supporting patch 1.5 was also exemplary and is probably the best patch of the second season.
In June of 2021, the Africa pack was released. Although a new DLC formula was introduced with the Southeast Asia pack, the Africa pack saw a return to the five animal template. Africa saw strong support in the initial animal roster of Planet Zoo, with the continent taking center stage with the most animals represented. It's no surprise that for one of Earth's most biodiverse continents, there are still so many iconic zoo animals that need to be included, and this pack represents an attempt at consolidating that diversity. There is a particular focus on the desert-dwelling species of Africa. The African penguin is the second penguin species to grace the game, and as the most commonly exhibited penguin, there's no surprises here, and I'm quite pleased they included atypical species from the standard African savanna animals, which are probably overrepresented. The fennec fox really should have been in the base game as probably the most requested fox species. As an iconic Sahara animal, one of Africa's most hardy desert dwellers, and a cute addition to any zoo, fennec fox will sure to be a standout part of the African pack roster. Almost with the same expectancy and level of popularity, the meerkat should also be high on the radar of welcomed additions. One of the question marks was how the developers would implement their burrowing behavior, and I think the way it is done now, where the meerkats animate digging holes into the ground and sort of teleport to another location in an exhibit, is a pretty creative and stable, non-intrusive way to do it. So yeah, kudos to that. Despite the vanilla game featuring many African rhino ornaments and scenery pieces, it's taken more than a year for an African rhino species to be introduced. It was a toss-up between either the black or white rhino, but I think they chose the more astute choice given the southern white rhinoceros does appear more readily compared to the former. With much competition on the exhibit front, the sacred scarab beetle was eventually chosen. Besides those who appreciate the Egyptian-themed compliment, I don't think many are impressed with this selection, although it is pretty funny to see dung beetles added into the game. The scenery pieces in this pack are decent, but the use cases of the pieces are a lot more subjective and in no way universal compared to many of the pieces in the aquatic pack. There are some Egyptian-themed iconography pieces which will be the standout to be able to build tombs or temple-style decor, but mostly it's far and few between. Instead, the pack's design gravitates to much more of a bazaar-style Moroccan theme. There's also a few other funny scenery pieces like Dromedary Camel Insignia, but without a Dromedary Camel in the game. Foliage selection is also pretty lackluster, although I did have a particular liking towards the Doom Palm. The El Dara Bazaar Zoo, a Casablanca-inspired North African zoo, is the African pack scenario map, featuring brilliant usage of vibrant colors, for example, in designing plazas and market spaces. So it's a good map for inspiration to work on guest areas. The habitats also provide some examples of the type of earthen works players can construct for their desert-themed animals. Patch 1.6 once again adds some nice additions to enhance customization and creativity. The addition of habitat webcams allows players to set up viewable camera traps with different filters such as night vision, offering a more realistic and immersive way to view your animals whilst also generating marketing rating for your zoo. Vista points on the other hand are an absolutely amazing feature to direct guests to ideal locations specifically set up to view animals or scenery. Often many players may dedicate a lot of effort and time to constructing complex buildings and viewing areas only for guests to completely bypass and ignore them. Well that's no longer the case with this feature. A bunch of mesh fence panels and off-grid one-way glass panels are also included intended to help provide more flexibility in designing custom fencing. Overall the general feeling for me personally is that the lineup of the African pack is disappointing because either these animals should have been really added into the base game at launch or they could have been alternated with something better, thus giving the opportunity to enrich the game with more obscure African species with this scope. It's funny because this is the sort of continent that would have greatly benefited from an animal pack since the scenery was not necessary given the breadth of African architecture already in the game, but some people will probably voice a different opinion here and that's perfectly fine. The final pack of Planet Zoo's second season was released in October 2021. The North Africa Animal Pack is the second animal pack release, offering another eight animal species. 
With this launch, it is obvious the pattern of DLC it will alternate between standard packs of 5 animals and scenery, and animal packs with 8 animals but without scenery. In terms of animals, the Americas was quite well supported in the base game to be honest. Bison, Pronghorn, Grizzly Bear, Timberwolf to name a few. So it was a surprise in all honesty to see North America, not really known for its huge biodiversity, to see it given the animal pack treatment. But as with most packs, there is a core of desperately desired species that makes this pack one of the best. This roster also seems to explore a lot of aquatic animals as well, and can almost be seen as like an American sequel to the aquatic pack. The American Alligator was a high request given its prolific captive representation, resulting it in being a fan favourite for one of the possible crocodilians at the game's launch. Well, two years later and the American Alligator is finally here. The Arctic Fox rivals the Fennec as the most requested fox species since launch. To be completely honest, this should have been added into the Arctic pack because its range isn't limited to North America, and as such many may feel its place has pushed another more deserving candidate off the list. Regardless though, it's finally here so let's enjoy our new white fluffy fox. A less of a premium selection was the black-tailed prairie dog. This is a rodent that is famous across the prairies of Central North America, and although pretty iconic as an animal, as a candidate for a zoo game, hmm, not so much. It's made especially worse because usually there's a small animal niche added to packs, but that position is already taken over with the North American beaver, so it makes the prairie dog even more questionable. These guys utilize the same burrowing behaviors as the meerkat. The favourite for Pinny Pet inclusion was the California Sea Lion, of course, so it was surprising to see it excluded from the aquatic pack. Well, that's no longer a surprise as its consideration for the North America pack makes sense. The species is a staple of American zoos and aquariums, known for its intelligence and quirkiness. Maybe not a mainstay of prediction list, but the cougar represents North America's own big cat species, and despite limited showing in captive settings, the cougar is still super iconic, highly successful, and welcome to the roster. An animal that really should have been in the base game finally reveals itself in the North America pack. Moose can be found across most of the boreal north, but I guess their relevance to the continent's cultural and historical significance, as well as the fact most of the world's captive moose reside in North America, makes it an astute choice. Continuing the aquatic theme with a splash of iconic American animals sees the beaver make an appearance. This species alongside the capybara are among the most requested rodents in the game, and it suitably fills out a small animal niche in this pack. The well-established bullfrog is perhaps famous to many Americans, but its status as a commonplace, widespread, pest-like and often invasive species has to be seen as another questionable choice in a continent not lacking of more interesting exhibit species. Personally, I would have preferred something like a snapping turtle here. Once again, as an animal pack, there is little scenery included besides some related signage for each of the species. There's only one sign per animal in comparison to the Southeast Asian pack where there were a few species that had two sizes at least. The included scenario zoo is the Jameson Wildlife Park, an Appalachian temperate zoo nestled among a collection of small lakes. The highlights of this zoo include a wooden sea lion podium, modelled after a lumber mill, with a fully fledged seating platform area, and a large beaver dam and a prairie dog mountain. This is a pretty difficult map all things considered due to the lack of space, but the challenge I guess is to force players to utilise the lakes by focusing more on aquatic animals. Patch 1.7 was not as extensive as previous patches, but still provided more support for the game's management aspects. This includes the Animal Talk seating, a path extra constructible that adds extra capacity to Animal Talks, great for those major dedicated shows like with the Sea Lions. There's also guest barriers which prevent traffic flow into closed off areas, a very useful tool for traffic management. The North America Animal Pack is one of the best value packs simply on the virtue of how much it offers in 8 species which is a lot more tangible in content and scenery pieces. In comparison to the Southeast Asia pack though, some of the animal choices were more questionable and not as clear cut since an impending European pack shares much overlap so it's also difficult to judge. I would have loved to have seen the Wolverine instead of the Prairie Dog for instance or maybe another deer species like Elk or even a lynx or bobcat.
The Aquatic Pack was a great pack to start off the second season. Its value derived from all the animals featuring diverse animation sets from their deep diving capabilities and the versatile scenery that can be utilized in a variety of use cases. It should be a competitive pack choice for players looking for their first Planet Zoo DLC, 7 out of 10. Exceptional value with 8 exotic animal species, there are no arguments with the choices except for maybe the exhibit insect. At the same price as the other packs, it's a must have for any player wishing to purely expand their animal roster, 9 out of 10. In comparison to all the game's DLC so far, it's honestly a mediocre but not terrible pack, with animals that should have been in the game in the first place, preventing other African favourites from being prioritised. Could have been an animal pack here I feel. It's worth a punt on sale for the Egyptian scenery pieces, 5 out of 10. A merger of iconic American stars and an aquatic thematic makes this a very solid pack, though there are a few questionable selections. Again, any animal pack seems to be just so much better price-wise because of the perceived value of the animals, the best part of the game, 8 out of 10. For comparison's sake, in our year in review a year ago, we rated the Deluxe Pack a 3 out of 10, the Arctic Pack a 4 out of 10, the South America Pack a 5 out of 10, and the Australia Pack 7 out of 10. As a result, subjectively speaking, the Aquatic, Southeast Asia, and North American packs were better than any of the first year DLCs and shows a vast improvement of content offerings with this second season. In that first review, we also rated the base game a 7 out of 10, a solid title with potential to become a great game. Praise was given to the animal designs, which still to this day carries its exceptional reputation through this year's 4 DLC offerings, and where there has been criticism, Frontier developments have been quick to rework any glaring uncanniness, such as with the Dole and Binturong. The main criticism was with the actual gameplay, but those concerns were definitely improved with the amount of patches, quality of life additions, and free content. All the mechanical additions in the patches are definitely not just filler or busy work either. The developers have tried to complement the gameplay experience. This year has done wonders for the game's management and it first gets a rating revision to an 8 out of 10. The game also received an anniversary update with some freebies, a new shop branding in Bernie's Cake Shop, and a new animal species in the black and white rough lemur, which is an awesome addition but a long time coming. We suggested in our year in review to the devs to give out free animals, like how it was done in the Zoo Tycoon games. None were given in the first anniversary, but this second year, alongside the introduction of 8 animal species packs, may indicate a change in mentality where perhaps the developers are starting to feel a bit more generous. One of the great community breakthroughs this year was the emergence of the new animal modding scene, back in March of 2021, where it really kicked off. Modders now have the ability to add their own models onto existing animation rigs, producing an immense amount of new species that probably would have never been considered by the developers. Although modding still suffers from many drawbacks, such as the availability of rigs, some bugs, and lack of polish compared to official animals, it's gotten to the point where standard animal packs are no longer desired because the modders can do a capable job at them. Instead, the developers should focus more on ambitious animal groups yet to be covered, similar in vain to the scope of the aquatic pack. Well, let's look at the future. Season 3 is confirmed with the next DLC announced as the Europe Pack and it was an obvious predictable next step to finish off all the temperate continents of the world. After this I can envision maybe one more pack to cover Greater Asia as that huge continent still has the scopes of India, Arabia, China and Far East Asia to cover. For the future after that though, the hope is to expand the aquatic archetype to include ocean-going animals, with my personal hope to see cetaceans, manatees, dugongs, sea turtles or the like. Modders have attempted to adapt these species onto existing rigs, but with an obvious amount of jankiness. Furthermore, to cover birds, an aviary system is greatly anticipated for the third season. It was anticipated for this second year, but it seems we may have to wait a little longer. Planet Zoo has gone from strength to strength in its second year, growing its animal roster, increasing its content, and furthering its potential with consistent developer support driven through community suggestions. 
With the game constantly on sale, there's never been a better time to pick it up and its DLCs for a discounted price and enjoy a great title made even better with two years of post-release improvements. This has been Planet Zoo, the Season 2 Review. Thanks to our patrons for making this review possible. You too can fund the creation of more analytical content by supporting us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month.